Did you ever know that Thor, the Nordic god Thor, is a cheap counterfeit for the god of the Bible? You say, well, now, please listen to me, okay? Please be open-minded enough to consider what I'm saying, all right? The oldest written accounts of Thor would be the poetic Eddas and, and all the different things that were written in the, I think, the 11th century or something. Snorri Sturluson compiled a lot of those ancient beliefs and whatever else. So the oldest records that we have are not even really a thousand years old. The oldest manuscript evidence, extant manuscript evidence for the Bible, um, go the whole way back to papyrus fragments from the first century. And then you get into, into the Dead Sea Scrolls, they go back even further than that. But the point is, nobody can argue, whatever your feelings are, detach your feelings from logic here for a minute, are there Bible manuscripts that are older than the writings about Thor? Yes, there are. Regardless of what you want to believe, there are written documents in museums that, are, that write about God and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. In other words, they are older by over a thousand years than the things about Thor. Now, with that understanding... Is it possible, is it possible, I'm not saying that this is a factual thing, but is it possible that the stories about Thor could have been counterfeited from the Bible? Ancient people had the Bible, they lost the manuscripts, they didn't think to make copies, and it started to go down through verbal transmission, and it eventually morphed and became Thor. Is that a possibility, since we know for a fact the Bible manuscripts are older by a thousand years at least. If you go back in like Dead Sea Scrolls, like I said, that's even older. But Bible manuscripts are a thousand years older than the ancient writings about the Vikings. Is it possible through verbal transmission that the stories of Thor actually go back to the Bible? Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about God. I'll show you an interesting thing here. John chapter 12 and this is the King James Bible, the only one that is um, based on the majority of extant Greek manuscripts. There are two lines of manuscripts, the what will be called sort of the Alexandrian Egyptian line, which is used by the Roman Catholic Church, um, based on a very small, less than 1% of extant Greek manuscripts, whereas the majority text, the Textus Receptus, used primarily by Ru the Russian Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox, they were the ones that kind of transmitted it down through the centuries. They didn't really follow it in many ways. They added to it, just like the Catholics did with all their divine traditions. But the point is, they preserved a lot of those manuscripts, and there are thousands of them. Like I said, over 99% of those extant Greek manuscripts, they underlie the text that was used to translate the King James Bible. That's why I use the King James Bible, that and quite a few other reasons I won't get into for sake of time. But John chapter 12, verse 28 through 30, let's read an interesting account here. And keep in mind what the Nordic myths say about Thor. John chapter 12, verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. Jesus speaking to the Father in heaven. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Huh. God of thunder? Others said, an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. All right. Hmm. It thundered. Thor is the god of thunder. I'll show you another one. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah 23. Verse 29 through 32. It says here, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit, 
this people at all, saith the Lord. Now I read verse 31 through 32 there for a very specific reason. We see verse uh, 29 identifies the Bible to be very much like a hammer. So the New Testament says God's voice thunders. Back in the Old Testament, his word that he uses is like a hammer. Hmm, could that be where Thor came from? I believe it is. But it says here in verse 31 and verse 32 that God is against people that twist his words and that say, well, God said this and God said that. God tells you to go to church. God tells you to wear your Sunday best. God tells you, you know, the Pope is the head of Christianity and the Catholic Church is the true church. And, whatever. and you look it up and you say, wait a second, there's no Catholic Church in here. There's no go to church in here. There's no Sunday best. There's no 10% tithe given to pay off the mortgage on the church. Where's that stuff at? Understand that God's against them. You say, well, I'm against the organized religion stuff. Well, so is God. That's why I recommend getting the King James Bible and read it for yourself with an open mind. But you say, I, I, I'm not really into this God stuff. Uh, a little bit too weak for me. I'm more into the Norse gods. Okay, but go back to Revelation chapter 19. I, I, I you know, the Bible's nice. It's good for nice churchy people and everything else. There's no scripture for them, their little social clubs. But I, I like, you know, kind of the fighting, the, the more manly type of a thing. But let me read you about this God of the Bible, the King James Bible. Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This is Jesus that's talking about here. He's coming back to make war. And if you study the have them all, which I have, I've read it, and um, it talks about Ragnarok and how that there would be this end times great battle and it destroys all kinds of stuff. Where'd they get it from? This book predates. It's a translation of ancient manuscripts, understand that. But the manuscripts that underlie this book predate the oldest writings about the Vitings by a thousand years. Hmm. Verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. I'm going to be in that army. Hmm. You can be too. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. He's not a wimp. The Jesus that you see, the little, the little guy that stands at the door and knocks, you know, <laughs> little sheep around the shoulder and everything else, that's not Jesus. Show me anywhere in Scripture where Jesus posed for paintings. <laughs> he didn't do it. They have the wrong Christ there. Verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together, together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Is that the Jesus that's presented in Christianity? Do you, in, I say Jesus Christ to you, do you envision this? Most of you don't. Verse 19, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Funny how uh, the mark of the beast there given and spoken about in more detail in Revelation chapter 13. Um, it talks about no man buying or selling save he that had the mark. And for years people laughed about that and everything else. And all of a sudden now all the countries of the world are saying we're going to have a central bank digital currency. And you won't buy or sell unless you have it. We're going to get rid of cash. We're going to get rid of gold and silver. We're going to get rid of all these other things. And we're all going to have a digital currency. That could easily be morphed into the mark of the beast. Just like this Bible right here, over 400 years ago, this book was translated, 1604 to 1611. B. 
began in 1604, finished in 1611, and it tells you all about it. Long before they would have known about implantable microchips and QR codes and whatever else. And yet here it is, being fulfilled right before your eyes. Verse 21, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. You say, well, wait, sword proceeded out of his mouth? Yeah, it's talking about his word. The word of God is like a double-edged sword the Bible talks about in the book of Hebrews. That's what it's speaking about. It's a reference. You can't just go and say, well, I'll pick this verse and look at that. That's ridiculous. No, you have to pair, compare Scripture with Scripture. Understand, of course, the Lord's not going to be standing there with a big metal sword sticking out of his mouth, swinging back and forth, hitting people. That's not going to happen. He speaks. His words are enough to slaughter. If you study the, what happens there, what the size of this army, it's 200 million men, and he slaughters them. <sighs> Just with his words, with his speech. Um, you say, well, I, I believe in Thor. I believe in Odin. I believe in the, the gods of Norse mythology. Okay, then let me ask you a really, a really pressing question. Are they real? Are they real? Or are they just, um, well, you know, kind of philosophical concepts of what, you know, what I want to see in the earth and what are these physical gods that you have can they protect you my gods protected me quite a few times and uh, my ancestry by the way um, goes back to Scotland and Germany Switzerland Sweden my ancestors were in Norse that's why this channel is called uh, born again barbarian Celtic ancient Britannia and Germania that's my ancestry so um, don't tell me well you know you were raised with this God or something you must be Jewish or something no I'm not Jewish I'm uh, I'm from the north my ancestors came here to get away from the Roman Catholic persecution the Roman expansionism that happens during the fifth kingdom that the Bible speaks of but um, if you're a young person, you're looking at this whole thing and saying, I don't want anything to do with Christianity, or any any age, whatever. Uh, I agree with you on that. This thing called Christianity out there has no basis in Scripture. Um, social clubs, it's all those things are. I walk in, they think I'm weird because of my long beard and whatever else, and I don't wear a suit and tie or anything else. <laughs> I used to, you know, but I saw the corruption in those places and I got out of them. So they're not based on the Scriptures. You'd do well to get a King James Bible and actually read it and get a different understanding of who Jesus Christ is. He's not a wimp. And um, you respect Thor, but you don't respect God? Well, Thor, I believe firmly, is just a perversion of who God is. And Odin, same kind of a thing. Hangs on a tree. Jesus hung on a tree. You say, well, uh, the, the Viking people, they were conquered by the Christianity. No, they were conquered by Roman Catholicism. Study history. Okay, Romanism um, fought against the barbaric people for centuries and finally conquered them with their Catholic religion. Roman Catholicism is not Bible-believing Christianity. So that is going to be it. Um, I pray you study this whole thing and find out uh, what is the true God, who is the true God, and um, because you're going to need Him in the future. This world is about ready to descend into chaos, the likes of which has never been seen before on this earth. And um, when that time comes, you're going to need to have a real God, not just some mythological guy that doesn't really exist. And um, you say, well, I, I believe that that's the God of the Bible. I think He's just mythological, and He's a fake sky fairy or whatever I've heard people insultingly say um, well you'll you'll see because you see there's a book of revelation the revelation of Jesus Christ it's actually called if you want the full title and that book of revelation um, speaks of world events that are going to be happening in the future many of which are already starting to happen so you're running out of time to get to know this God of the Bible and uh, if you become his enemy you might end up as bird food Revelation 19. 
I suggest you get the right God and that you do it quickly.